So uh, thank you everyone for staying back uh, for the final session of the day. Uh, joining us in this session, we have Shivi Khanna, who is a third year student at NYU. And uh, in this session, you're going to listen to Shivi uh, as she shares her experience of how he, she got into NYU, how she built her profile during high school, the challenges that she faced, and then finally she'll advise uh, you on how you can get into some of the most selective universities in the world. A little bit about Shivi. Shivi is a junior, that's a third year student at the Stern School of Business, which is one of the most selective business schools in the world. And she's pursuing her finance and data science. She also runs Eduright Careers, which is a peer mentorship platform to fulfill her passion of making the transition to college smooth for students. Uh, thank you so much, Shivi. It's a pleasure having you here uh, in this session today. And uh, I'm looking forward to learning more about your experience. And before we get going, just a couple of quick announcements. First one is, yes, this session is being recorded. So you can ac access the recording uh, on our YouTube channel. And second is, uh, there is a Q&A feature down in the bottom panel. Uh, and if you have any specific questions, anything that you would like to know more or know about, just post the questions there and we'll take up towards the end of the session. With that, uh, welcome Shivi and uh, Thank you for joining and let's start off by you telling us a little bit about your um, uh, current uh, position and then I'll ask you more questions about your schooling and things like that. Yeah. Thank you so much Devesh for an amazing introduction. I mean yeah I don't think I have anything else to add to that introduction. I'm working in the hedge fund industry currently. I'm interning with a hedge fund. It's called Millennium Management. I think probably that was not there in the introduction but yeah getting so firstly, just to start off that education abroad, specifically in the United States, it is a wealthy, or I would say it is an expensive affair. But at the end of the day, the things that you learn, the way you become independent is much more that we, that the opportunities that we have in India, unfortunately, I hope at some point we can have those opportunities in India as well, because right when you enter college here, you start getting your on-campus jobs or you start looking for internships even. So, and you start earning a good amount of money. So that doesn't only make you financially independent. It also gives you a sense of responsibility, a sense of how to behave in that corporate atmosphere, how to think big, or, you know, that gives you a start right when you're in college. And more than the money, it's also about the teamwork or the kind of things that you learn in a business atmosphere. For example, myself, I'm working in a hedge fund now with, in my team, there are 15 other analysts who are professionals and have been in that industry for more than five, 10, 15 years also. So the kind of experience that you earn from those things is much more valuable and it adds to the kind of education that you get abroad. So yeah, that would be my starting pitch. And moving yes. on, you can have any questions. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you have. Super, Shivi. So do share about your high school journey with us. Where did you go to high school? How was your high school trajectory, academics and things like that? So, well, I uh, grew up in Surat, Gujarat. And I went to, like, from my elementary school to preschool to elementary school to high school, I went to the same school, Delhi Public School in Surat. Well, my high school experience was full of different experiences. I was always that proactive person. I did well at academics and uh, uh, even in extra co-curriculars. In fact, when we were planning to apply to college, I used to go to people, mentors, ask them, you know, how does my resume look? Or when I actually started thinking about a resume, probably in grade, end of grade 11 or grade 12. And they said, oh, wow, you worked really well on your resume. And I used to just laugh and say that I never planned or worked on it. For me, at least, it was always that I was always interested in any opportunity that came my way. I never thought that, oh, this is something I'm interested in or this is something I'm not interested in. Definitely things that I was interested in, I jumped on them. But even something that I didn't know about or didn't have any experience in, I tried to at least do it to gain that experience. And that's what shaped my resume in a very well manner when I was in high school, 
and for me at least i always saw problems and i try to bring out solutions for the same and that worked really well in my favor cuz that way i initiated certain clubs i initiated some organizations while it, while i was in high school and that turned out to be a leadership aspect on my resume and that worked really well and my motivation to why i wanted to apply abroad was i think my mom she always wanted to go and study abroad but her family situations were not such that she could have pursued there so she wanted to live her dream through me and more than that the kind of independence that i saw people got when they went there the kind of responsibilities that they understood i'd always been a responsible one since i was the eldest in my house but also the notorious one so i still like to keep the child in me al- alive but at the same time i like to keep a balance so that was my high school experience i ended up being the head girl for my school the school was more than 5000 students so i was the head of the student council in the last year so my high school journey was very very good but then when i transitioned to nyu initially i got a fear of missing out i will say that open and loud because there's no shame in that since although the school dps was big enough but i was always involved in everything like any event that happened i was a part of it anything that happened at dps i took initiative and i went forward and participated when i came to nyu it was a welcome week welcome week is a big affair and in that you have a lot of events happening and you know ways you can meet people meet different departments parties different things i wanted to attend every event but that's not possible because there were 10 events going on at the same time that was the fear of missing out that i had but then i soon overcame it because it was no more my high school with just 5000 students but it was a university with different colleges with probably more than 25000 students or probably more if i'm wrong in the number so Wonderful. then i overcame that fear of missing out and then i started channelizing my interests to see which is my priority which event do i really want to go to and yeah that was the kind of transition i faced that's such a fantastic piece of advice i mean at college there are so many opportunities you know there are probably hundreds and hundreds of clubs at nyu and there are so many events so many things happening in parallel and selecting what to do what not to do is 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 very important i mean you just have this much time and you can only do so much in in your limited time right so that's really a, a great piece of advice i mean now a lot of time we hear people saying that participate lead you know but and what where to participate in and where to lead that that no one tells right that is something you have to figure out yourself that's okay. true super so my next question to you is uh, if you could share with us about your college application journey uh, how did you work on your profile how did you write your essays and eventually how did you make your college list uh, and how how did that whole process work out for you let's look at the four years grade 9 10 11 12 because people often you hear people saying that these are the four years that are really important for the application that you do abroad versus if in if it's only in india it's usually just the final grades of your 12 board exams also in india i think the 12 board exam grades just came out today so congratulations to everyone who got their results i hope they were rewarding enough but yeah so speaking of that i said my i was always motivated that i wanted to study abroad but i never had us fixated in my mind i wanted to explore different countries and see where i can find the most beneficial course according to my interests also if you ask me on the long term i want to pursue law still that is a goal that i have but i like to have a path but at the same time i like to take different routes to probably explore different things and then reach that goal if they seem more beneficial to me so well talking about application so yeah in terms of profile building i never really focused on oh i have to do this for my profile it worked really well for me but in terms of an advice for everyone that's listening make sure you have i mean you don't need to have like 10 different things on your resume because it's recommended that you just have one piece of like one page of the resume and not more than that for a high school student but it's important that the three to four things or five things that you do you do them consistently you show that you are consistent in what you do i mean you start something and you come to an end of it i mean in india we have so many different opportunities in terms of pursuing classical music or dance or uh, i know trinity like speech and drama and all these different things they are they have levels 
I mean, make sure that you complete those levels because that shows that you don't start something and just leave it in the middle. You go towards the end of it. You achieve excellence that way. Nobody is born smart. And even if they are, they do things in order to sh- reflect that on their paper, right? So it's important that you be consistent. Try to have a hobby if you don't and show that you can excel in that. Either it's sports or it's uh, like art, music, anything. And so try to have a hobby that shows that you have something other than academics to be proud of. Be really, like, try to be good at your academics because, I mean, that reflects that the student is proactive, even if you're not. I mean, I wouldn't say all the students that I've gotten at EduRight, they were not all very good at academics, but they were very good at something else. And it happens with everyone. You might not be good at everything, but you might be good at one thing. So make sure that is reflected well in your application that this is one thing that I do really well and because I was focusing on that my other things are standard not up to the mark maybe so academics extracurriculars like a hobby leadership activities try to take initiative try to start a club at your school at the least or try to do something in your city try to gather a team try to organize this will not just help you with your resume of course but will help you in terms of the skills that you develop because when you come to college Like in school, teachers are behind you for submissions. In college, nobody is behind you. If you forget, you just get a zero. And that's simple. They fail you that class. You don't get credits for it. It's not like the teacher is going to be behind you and be like, beta, submit karo. That's not the case. They don't care. They have a class of 250 students. How do you expect them to be, be behind every student? So it's important that you take responsibility. So these skills also are developed when you start these leadership projects because at the end of the day, you are leading a team and they are answerable to you or you are getting work done. So that way it really helps. So this and then other than that, yeah, try to get some professional experience if possible or try to do like something like a research paper, something apart from what your school is offering in terms of academics also. Because that would show that, okay, you are really like, I mean, if you know what course you want to apply to vaguely or what area you want to apply to vaguely, Try to do a research paper. If not, try to do something in, say, like volunteering. Try to do something non-profit, you know, because those things are important on a paper. But just don't do it for the sake of your resume. I, it, it might sound cliche, but at the end of the day, when I'm talking to you, I'm sharing my experience, you can see that passion or that enthusiasm in me. Or if you ask me a question, I will have an answer to it. So, I mean, if you lie on your resume or only do things for the sake of it, you wouldn't enjoy your experience You wouldn't learn any skill out of it, which will help you in the future. And I mean, you would not enjoy that time spent. Time is money. That is a concept everyone talks about, but nobody really considers it. So the the time that you're investing in your resume, portfolio building, or in these events or anything, that is your money that you're investing in your skills, right? So these are my general tips for portfolio building. Sorry if I went long, but in my journey, I prepared for SATs in my mid grade 11, I would suggest students to start early as after like their grade 10, do the summer, do practice in that. Cause I mean, it's valid for five years after you write it. So might as well do it early cause it has concepts of grade 10, right? So if you prepare early, get it done with, that's out of your way. You have more time to focus on your courses, essays, colleges, whatsoever. I did it in my grade 11. And then uh, in terms of college selection, I my family had uh, budget restrictions. I'm sure everybody has. So I had to keep that in mind, the colleges that give really good uh, scholarships. And uh, you'll be surprised, Devesh, I also applied to Next Genius. I never shared this with you. But yeah, maybe when you see 2018 or 2019 applications, you'll find me there. So, but then I, I wanted to aim to a college that had a standing in terms of the kind of caliber that I followed. I heard that NYU is a place that gives a lot of scholarships. So it was my early decision. Again, another surprising fact, I had a couple of colleges on my list, but NYU was my early decision. That is that if they admit me, I will not go anywhere else. And they admitted me. I got my decision in December. I never applied anywhere else. So this was my only college application, although I was preparing in the back for everything else. But this was my only college application that I made and how I selected NYU is because it's not a I mean you should consider different facts like weather for yourself food conditions housing 
I mean, if your family has any foundations in terms of, oh, if our relatives go there, I mean, if that's something that you have to consider, people have different personal things to consider. But the first step would be to go to US News. That is a website that gives rankings for colleges. Try to look at colleges that, is, that are your aim. I mean, you know, you know yourself better than anyone else. So try to see what ranking do you fall in. Try to create a categorized list based on dream, reach, and safety colleges. Have 12 to 15 colleges on that list. And based on that, yeah, I see the US News link in there. So based on that, I mean, try to make, create a list. So you'll know that reach is basically that, okay, you can 80% get it. Safeties are that people beyond your caliber also got it, below your caliber also got it. So they're like your safeties. And dream colleges are something that you might have a chance or might not have a chance. But I highly recommend apply to dream colleges also because sometimes you don't know what the admission officer is thinking, what they like about your portfolio. Also, in terms of essays, I have to say, again, if someone said that before, it might be cliche. Be original. Try to write things out of the box. In my essay to NYU, I compared myself to NYU. I said that I feel and I am as independent as NYU is being amidst the New York City, the large, like, you know, the heart of the world or whatsoever, but still, and it doesn't have a confined campus, but at the same time, it holds an identity. And I mean, I made NYU a first person, in first person, and that's what I wrote on my essay. So, I mean, you could be creative, you could write whatever you want to write. Some interviews that I give for my jobs, I, they ask me what skills do I have, which are not there on the resume. I talk about how I am the eldest sibling. I've been a roommate with my siblings. I've been a roommate with other strangers. And that gives you a lot of qualities. I mean, that keeps you like how you have to be patient or how you have to manage your time. I mean, these are the skills that are important for a job as such, but nobody thinks about it that way. So, I mean, write small things like that because somebody should look at your paper. When they are going through so many applications, they should look at your application and name you or tag you or at least laugh or have some emotion because when later on they're going back through those applications they should see that paper and be like oh this is that girl who made NYU in first person or this is that girl who wrote about her rooming, rooming experience and nothing major I mean you know so try to make your application unique and that cannot happen when you copy essays from the internet so I mean refrain from that how I went about it was I sat with my school teachers. I brainstormed the ideas on those uh, questions. I wrote something by myself. I went back to them. They edited it for me. Then they gave it back to me. They gave suggestions. I again wrote on it. I entered the whatever feedback they had. And then so, so that it's grammatically also right. Sometimes we as a student might not. So I mean, definitely take help on getting your essay edited, but not written by someone. And yeah i mean is there is there anything that i didn't answer for your question uh, no i think you answered that uh, fantastically thanks for sharing all that wonderful information sure. and i really enjoyed hearing that so <laughs> i do have more questions for you uh, and that is what were some challenges that you faced actually like uh, you you shared about how you crafted the whole thing your essays and uh, you know uh, your profile uh, but but what were the challenges that you faced as you worked uh, on, on your college application? Sure. So one challenge that I personally faced was that I was in a CBSC school. So I had no idea how SATs or ACTs for that matter worked. I was not informed or, or did not have those resources at our school to understand how early I could start the preparation. So when I started in grade 11, I mean, I initially did not do well on SATs. Math was really good. English was something that was a major issue because it was different than how we are, like, you know, IB schools teach English in that way. So that was one setback that I faced. My SAT score was not as excellent as my school scores were. If I was like a 98% in my school scores, I did not fall in that category on the SATs. That was one strategic decision that we had to take in terms of applying to colleges. So NYU at that time was the only or only few colleges that took either SATs or school scores, not both. Now there are many because of the COVID pandemic and everything. There are several colleges, including the UCs, who've 
do not need both SATs and school scores. They are accepting either or. So it becomes, it gives students like me much more options. I did not have many options there. So that was one thing how I had to select my colleges. And NYU was also on the top of the list because they had the either or policy. So it's one setback that I faced, but I mean, I overcame it in terms of strategizing how I want to apply to which college. Second issue, most of the students might wait as a writer's block. I mean, when you're writing so many essays, there's a common app essay to write. There is a personal NYU essay to write or a personal college essay to write. If you're applying to multiple countries, you have other countries, portals, everything else. So several essays, right? You might have that writer's blog and sometimes feel, ek essay ko dusre mein laga ke likh dete hain, sirf college ka naam change kar denge. I'm being very honest here, it doesn't work. Because every, I mean, when you are writing those essays, try to meet with students or faculty from that particular college. It is possible. Fight, try to find them on LinkedIn or that college website. Reach out to them. Ask them you want to speak to them. Try to ask them things that they know about the college, which is not there on any website in the world. And I'm sure they'll give you many things. Write those things in your essays. Because that's what surprises me when I read an essay. Wow, how does this student know about this? And you need to mention that you spoke to an alumni, spoke to a current student, spoke to a faculty member and came to know about this. That shows how interested you are in that college, right? So that interest, that passion is sometimes more important than the grades that you submit. So in your essays, that's another suggestion. So yeah, writer's block is normal. Leave that for a day, start working on something else, get back to it the other day and you will not face that writer's block. You will get creative, you'll know. Ask people, brainstorm. Asking will never harm you. Talk to as many people as you can. I mean, it might sound stupid to you to waste so many, so much time talking to people, but it's not a waste. Even to get jobs, we have to talk to people in order to, I mean, all companies have internal referral systems, which they do not explicitly talk about. But if you talk to someone, express your interest, they might offer to refer you. That's what gets you interviews with 200,000 applications. How do you think that 2,000 are selected? They do not go through every resume. That's not like how colleges work, of course. But I'm just giving you an example that it might not hurt to talk to people. When somebody reads, oh, you spoke to this particular professor, they might be like, wow, this person has really reached out to people and got to know certain situations. So, I mean, yeah, that was the setback in terms of the SAT and the writer's blog that I faced. But I soon overcame it by talking to people and SAT was strategically planning your college applications. Superb. That's, that's really a fantastic piece of advice. Yeah, I mean, of course, uh, reach out to people and talk to them uh, because, uh, and that's not just only because they can provide you references, but they, will, they can provide you so much valuable information. Uh, and, you know, that can be an eye opener for you, these conversations. Just like I'm sure all of you, when you're listen, listening to Shivi, I'm sure you, you learned a lot about how to approach your college applications. Okay, so Shivi, my next question to you is, uh, in hindsight, uh, can you think of some mistakes that you could have avoided? Okay. Um, when I think of mistakes that I could have avoided, I believe probably I could, I'm being here honest again, uh, budget constraints or SAT, ACT issues, whatever. I never applied to colleges above NYU. I mean, I didn't apply to IVs because people told me that they do not give scholarships to international students, which is not true. I mean, I see colleges giving ample amount of scholarships if they want you in that college. So, I mean, I didn't keep, um, NYU is a very good school. Finance is at Stern is top two. So, I mean, no regrets as such, but if I would have wanted the kind of resume or the kind of academic that I had, I would, would could have applied to colleges better than NYU also. So that's one thing that, and two, this is an interesting story. When I came to NYU, I didn't apply to Stern. I came for an economics and mathematics combined major at College of Arts and Sciences at NYU. So, and it was not because, I mean, I was, for me, I always thought business is something that cannot be taught at school. It can only be learned through experience. And so I was like, oh, and I can, I compared the business degree there to the BBA that we had in India, which was again, short-sightedness on my end, or I mean, so I 
sometimes have a little regret in that that if i would have applied because when you come to the call i wasted a couple of classes or credits as we would say on classes for math and economics and then i transferred to stern but i mean i'm still going to complete my degree in time but i would have gotten more opportunity to do another courses also at stern apart from my degree if i would have directly applied or directly entered stern so that is one thing that brainstorm really well different things that you can do or want to do do not sell yourself short in terms of the colleges that you select you want safeties but you want some risks also so take dreams right do not sell yourself short and secondly try to again talk to people and see what courses offer what value because if i would have spoken to more people at stern and understood what their experiences were maybe i would have applied to stern directly thirdly uh i would say in addition yeah i mean people say that cbse schools are as equal to ib schools and i mean i agree i'm still i still landed here i'm doing well but if you are really sure you want to go abroad i would suggest transferring to an ib school near high school why just because there are some credits that are transferred when you go to college so i mean for to complete my degree i need to achieve 128 credits here at nyu if out of that even 6 credits are transferred i am high in the game right i will complete 128 early but at the same time i'll get more opportunity to do other courses that might be just a hobby or an interest so if you're really sure you want to go abroad i mean and you do not have any reason to stay back i if i would have gotten that opportunity i would still stay at dps cuz i always dreamt of becoming the head girl i worked hard towards it and i really wanted to see myself there so i would have not transferred still if i knew this also but if you do not have any such reasons i highly suggest going to an ib school so that your those credits can be transferred to college wonderful so we are let's change gears and uh, do tell us a little bit about your work at edurite and what's the vision behind it well edurite is a passion project and edurite careers basically works towards creating a network of student mentors and professionals to help students in their college applications and in order to make that transition from school to college smoother everything i'd mention right, right from selecting courses colleges to resume building or to understanding what course to select which countries to apply to what colleges to apply to we help our students with everything in addition to essay editing by professionals and going till the time that they get their acceptances because when you get more than one acceptance you have to also make a decision which one to select so that is also something that we help in addition to helping the student we also help families understand how to budget that education because sometimes people just leave this dream let alone because this is a hefty amount so i mean we help students and parents and families to also understand how this can be funded what kind of resources opportunities they have scholarships financial aids undergraduate loans etc and their payment plans here in the us or in different countries and everything like that so we try to go above and beyond and we are proud because we feel that we get very personalized we try to achieve things for the student that they never thought that they could achieve i mean we do not have a criteria of only taking bright students as i said earlier we take students who are passionate i always in my first meeting i say that if you give me 10% i'll give you 110 but i need that effort from your side so yeah at edu right basically we do everything from the network calls that i mentioned because these are the things that i learned in my journey and i want students to learn and also we try to make it a economical process because we know that the industry has been roaring and this has become a very expensive process as well so that is in short edu right so yeah and i mean apart from edu right also anybody who speaks to me once i always say you're a part of edu right family and i mean it they still reach out to me and talk to us about even if they do not enroll with us but yeah that's how it is if i've spoken to people here you are already a part of my family whoever is listening and i mean they wish uh, you if you have my contact details you can share with them or i can share them in the chat box here as well feel free to contact me and uh, since i am in new york uh, my other team members for edu right are in india and we function in a 24 hour pattern we are again proud of that because i mean if a student reaches out to us at night we reply in 5 minutes if somebody reaches out in the day we reply in 5 minutes 
So yeah, I would recommend you sending me an email or a text message to reach out to me. And then we can fix a time and chat more in detail about anything that I can help you with. And I'll be more than happy to help. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Shivi. Uh, and I've shared uh, Eddie Wright's Instagram account and Shivi's email ID here in chat. So feel free to reach out to her. And I'm sure you're going to gain a lot, lot many more insights uh, from her. With that, Shivi, we are coming to the end of the session. And before we close, I would like you to share a final word of advice with these high school students who are uh, thinking of colleges abroad. I would just say, you can think of 100 reasons why not to go. But even if you have one reason that you really want to go, I mean, you can make all those other 100 reasons work out. As I said, I had several constraints, not one. I mean, now that you're talking to me and I'm, now I'm talking to you in a fashion that I'm, since I'm already here, but I really feel proud in terms of my family helping me out there, being that support system and encouraging me to go. And I mean, leaving your home, coming so far, it's not easy. Some days you'll feel alone. Some days you'll want to go back home. You'll feel homesick. You'll want home food, whatever. But I mean, the experiences that I've nurtured so far, I'm looking forward to the other two years, third year and the fourth year at college also. But I mean, I feel very confident, I would say that. And I just feel confident, independent, and more motivated to do things which are available. Because if we do not leave our nests, we will not be able to explore what is there in the sky, right? So it's important that you leave or to try to leave that nest, still stay rooted and always try to achieve excellence. I mean, running behind referrals the other time that Devesh mentioned, or running behind money, running behind anything else, all these things will be attracted towards you if you run behind excellence and more than excellence, hard work. I mean, try to just work towards things, give time and I think, yeah, you will, you will do it really well. If you guys are here at this time when probably you should be having dinner or whatever, I know that you guys are already passionate. So just channelize that passion to achieve your goals. Thank you so much for listening to me. Fantastic. That's so inspiring, Shivi. And I'm sure the students who get to work with you more closely uh, get much more uh, dose of that inspiration and are yeah. much more hardworking and uh, gain a lot of that attitude so fantastic uh, and I'm sure all these students who are here today uh, they would have benefited so much uh, after listening to this and they are feeling so prepped up and I'm sure they are they're going to work harder in the coming weeks and months leading to their college journey so with that uh, we are coming to the end of the session uh, thank you everyone for joining us today uh, this is the end of day one we have another day full of exciting presentations uh, where you get to listen to more uh, inspiring people and uh, inspiring organizations who have programs for you, programs uh, and sort of activities that you can participate in uh, to build your college application. So thank you for joining everyone and uh, have a great day. And I'll see you, we'll see you all tomorrow. Thank you so much, Shivi, for your time today on, on a Friday morning and have a great day. Thank you, thank you, Devesh.